Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation How to Buy a House with Bad Credit Get ready to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information can be found at Investopedia where you can go to look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This is by Ray Houtley Beck, published January 3rd, 2022. How to buy a house with bad credit. Buying a house is absolutely possible with bad credit. In other words, you might be thinking, I don't think I could buy a house because I have bad credit. That is going to be a hurdle to go through because when we go through the home purchasing process, Typically, we're going to be needing financing because we're not usually able to put the cash down up front. And when we go through the financing process, we would like to get as favorable financing as we could. It would be as easy as possible to get the most favorable financing if we could check off all the boxes, including things like having good credit would be a good, good one. Being able to put a good amount down, like a 20% down payment, for example, having a solid income from a dependable source, one which the bank thinks is a dependable source. Those are all things that look good on the lender side of things. And if it looks good on the lender side of things, that means that they're gonna have less risk or feel that they have less risk. And that usually means that we get a more beneficial process uh, for us. But what happens if we can't basically check off all those, all those nice shiny boxes though? So, but it is harder and more expensive than it would be for people with excellent credit. So obviously having better credit would make the process easier to do because we'd be checking off that box. If not, then we're, we're gonna have to go through a little bit more difficult process, but possible to still get the loan possibly. Before starting the home buying process, you should consider why you want to be a homeowner. So clearly that's one of our decision-making process points. When we wanna get into the home, why do we want the home? Is it gonna be an investment type of thing or is it more like something that we want to live in for a long period of time. In other words, most of the time when people purchase a home, they might feel, one, I want, I need the home for my personal, that's where I wanna put my roots down, that's where I wanna be for a long period of time, and I want this location here. Uh, that would be the one reason. The other reason would be, well, I feel pressured to put an investment in, I wanna invest in the home, and I feel like there's uh, certain people, and or maybe even the government with the deductibility of taxes and, and interest, kind of in incentivizing purchasing a home so I feel almost obligated uh, to buy a home. Now normally I would think that that first one would be the more legitimate reason, right? If you're going to be uh, able to afford the payments on the home and you're able to stay in the home for a long period of time and that's where you want to be, then even if, 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 the, if there's a fluctuation in the market, then uh, in the long run, if the home serves its purpose and you're able to make the payments, you'll typically be better off. If you're purchasing it as an investment, then it's likely that you're gonna be worrying a lot more about the increases and the decreases uh, in the market and possibly in it for more of a short-term time frame. And so you, you wanna just make sure that you're aware of that when you go into it. So home ownership has many large unexpected costs that can be difficult to cover if your financial situation is unstable. Continuing to rent indefinitely or until your credit uh, improves may the, be the best financial choice for you. So if your credit isn't great, uh, then then it might be, you know, you want to measure the pros and cons, which we've taken a look at in the prior presentation about whether it be best to rent or the pros and cons of renting versus home ownership, home purchase. So an FHA loans, uh, your credit option for bad credit. Federal Housing Administration, the FHA loans are loans insured by the FHA, but are actually issued by any FHA approved lender. FHA loans are created to help low and moderate income borrowers become homeowners. Owners, uh, if individuals cannot get approved for conventional mortgages, then FHA loans are the remaining option for helpful for hopeful home buyers with bad credit. So clearly, the the FHA would be an option in that situation. This is one of those things, one of those kind of laws. In addition to say uh, being able to deduct things like interest on the home, possibly if you're itemizing, and then the property taxes. And then you've got these incentive programs, which were put in for many people as a, a good intention to help people achieve the dream of you know, getting a home. But at the same time, these are also the types of things that make us feel like you know, we should get a home or we're obligated to get a home or the government is saying that you know, home is part of, of the process would be beneficial to do so. And so note that these programs have a lot of different incentives in them. So of course we want to use them when they're applicable to us 
but I wouldn't use the program it, program's existence, the ability to deduct, for example, sample interest and whatnot, as rationale as to why to buy buy the home. It's just another factor that you got to put uh, in, you know, the pros and cons to see whether it be a beneficial financial and personal choice. So FHA loan requirements, credit score as low as 500 with 10% down or as low as 580 with 3.5% down. So clearly the down payment is another kind of key component. So if we were taking like a normal loan, then and, and we just had the two people involved, the bank and the lender, and we don't have like the third component of the government. Clearly, the bank wants to make money. That's their point here. So they would like to give the loan because they make the money from the interest. However, they got to take on the risk of people not paying back the loan. And so the way they're going to mitigate the risk is one, they're going to put a substantial amount down payment. So the more down payment is put down, the more the bank feels that the home purchaser is invested in the home and the more secure they are in the event that the home purchaser or buyer, the one taking out the loan, if they default on the loan, then you have recourse to the home and the home should be valued above the loan value because you put down the down payment. So you can see that that would significantly lower the risk to the bank. So the higher the down payment on the bank side, the more comfortable they generally feel. And then also, of course, the credit score is the other big kind of factor that they're going to take into consideration because that's going to give them some history as to your your ratings or your ability to pay back the credit. And then, of course, your income level is going to be another big factor that will put into play and then possibly uh, your balance sheet after that point in time. So debt to income ratio of 43% or less. So we're going to use these kind of heuristics, these ratios to help with our calculations on the lender side of things. Remember that when you're using these ratios, these ratios are the types of things that the lenders are going to use because they want to be able to apply something that's fairly consistent and which they can depend on uh, for a large amount of people. So note what the, what the lender can depend on. They can depend on gross income typically because they can verify most of the time the W-2 or the deposits into the checking account at least or, or the, uh, uh, the income level in some way, the 1099s or the tax return to help to verify the income. They can't verify your spending habits per se as easily because those are things that aren't being reported on the taxes per se uh, oftentimes. So they would like to have a heuristic on the gross income. But note that that doesn't really reflect your personal spending habits. Your personal spending habits might be very different than the average other personal spending habits. So you don't want to depend on the lender to be having them try to calculate whether or not you know you can afford they're not doing the budgeting for you in other words they're doing it on their side to see how much they would be willing to lend you keep those two things separate i want to go to the bank and i'd like to be able to have this much access to as much funding as i possibly could have if i need the funding i would like it to be there the higher the better and so that's what you're talking to the bank for on our budgeting side then i'm looking at my budgeting to determine how much i want to actually take out how much loan i can afford to take out i'm not dependent on the bank to do that i'm going to the bank and giving them the numbers hoping to get as much financing available as i can and then i do my own kind of thought process in terms of how much i want to actually take out hopefully i want to take out something less than the amount that i possibly could take out if i if i needed to from the bank so verifiable income for two plus years so they're typically going to go back a couple of years to verify the income and the more solid the income source is the better to the to the loan so what they like to see is something that's like if you were like a tenured professor or something like that and you're locked in your job they couldn't fire you if they if they wanted to kind of thing <laughs> then uh, that's pretty secure you know what the pay rate is going to be and whatnot and obviously that would be a, a fairly secure item. If you're an hourly employee and whatnot, even if you make good money, hourly employee, you're making a lot of overtime, they might feel a little less secure given the fact that the hours could fluctuate and whatnot. And if you're a sole proprietorship, then unfortunately they're gonna be a little less secure oftentimes because there could be fluctuations in that market as well. So improve your credit score or taking a few steps to improve your credit score before home shopping will improve your home buying experience Exponent exponentially. 
So if you can increase or if you can, you know, increase the credit and there are tactics you could do to do so if your credit score is low, then you might want to take a look at that. In today's hot real estate market, many home sellers are less likely to choose offers with low down payments that will require them to deal with FHA's stringent appraisal appraisal process. So if you know, obviously, when you got the government kind of involved, there's typically going to be kind of more red tape that is going to be involved. So if you're in a, in a, in a market where people are able to sell and the, the seller doesn't have to deal with that as much, they might, you know, they might be tending not to if they don't have to. So improving your credit score can allow you to get a conventional mortgage and make stronger offers on homes that are more, more likely to be accepted. So if there's a lot of competition in the market, then you want to do whatever you can to, to, to get an edge against the competition to pick up the home uh, on, on your end. So number one, pull your credit report to see why your credit is low and check for errors. So what we can we do to get the credit score up? We can take a look at the credit score. That's the first thing to do. Check it out. What's going on? Why isn't it, why isn't it excellent? Why don't I have five stars on this thing? This is free to do once a year from Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion at annualcreditreport.com. So these are the three credit kind of scoring agents uh, places they go to. Uh, you know, the lenders will typically go to all three of them and kind of check them out. And so you can go to them and you can find them at this website if you so choose, annualcreditreport.com. Number two, pay down any revolving credit lines to improve your credit utilization uh, percent. This usually, usually results in an immediate jump in score. Number three, have any errors removed from your credit report, especially late payments. So if you have any late payments on there that are impacting negatively your credit score, if there's a way to get those off of there, then that would improve your credit score, especially if, if they're erroneous, then hopefully you can do so. Number four, consider consulting with a credit report service to see if your score can be improved enough to save you the cost of their fees in reduced mortgage rates. So why, why you should improve your credit score before buying. Even improving your credit score by just a few points before buying can still save you thousands of dollars. So the better credit score is going to put less risk on the lender. The lender typically feeling more comfortable. If they have less risk, then they might be able to offer less in terms of the rate that, uh, in terms that they'll be charging. If boosting your score allows you to be approved for a conventional mortgage instead of an FHA loan, you will save the upfront mortgage insurance premiums of 1.75% of the loan amount. Additionally, conventional loans tend to have lower closing costs and interest rates than FHA. FHA loans, while both FHA loans and conventional loans will require a monthly mortgage insurance, if you put down less than 20%, an FHA loan includes monthly mortgage insurance for the life of the loan that you can only get rid of by refinancing and paying closing costs on a new loan. So, you know, that can that could get expensive if it's, if it's going over the whole the whole time frame for a conventional loan. The private mortgage insurance drops off once your loan balance is e uh, equal to 80 percent of the property value. So the, the general idea here is the, the lender wants to safeguard uh, the loan. If they're taking on a more risky loan, then they want uh, the insurance. And obviously, if you take the FHA, they're going to have the insurance the whole way out because the whole point of the FHA is because it's more risky in the first place. But if you take the conventional loan and you put in less than the 20 percent, that's when they're usually going to say, hey, look, I got a more risky kind of component here because you're not invested in it. So I want the insurance up until the point where I feel like you're solidly invested, which is that 20 percent down or or the loan equaling 80 percent of the property value. Uh, and, and so then you might be able to drop it off a little bit faster then. So optimize the, the, the rest of your borrowing pr uh, profile. Your credit score isn't the only factor that goes into being approved for a loan. You can increase your likelihood of being approved for a loan under favorable terms, even with bad credit, by optimizing the other parts of your borrower profile. So putting your money down on your mortgage, putting more money down on your mortgage essentially means that you are putting more of your own collateral into the loan and makes the lender view you as less likely to default uh, and a risk lower uh, borrower. So when we're looking at the different factors here, the credit score is only going to be one factor. Another factor is going to be, you know, how much revenue do you make? They're going to be looking at that. They might look at your balance sheet, although you're probably kind of stretching yourself 
to put as much cash down as you can uh, up front anyways and then the more money you're going to put down up front then that's going to make the, the borrower feel good as well so if you were able to overcompensate on one of those items if your credit score isn't as good as it could be but you could put more down up front then you might be able to to compensate to some degree so if you are struggling uh, to come up with down payment money there are many unique ways to beef up your funds some areas even have down payment assistance programs improving your debt to income the dti ratio can also help you get approved for a mortgage with bad credit so the other fa factor is your uh, debt to income so there's two factors in their debt and income that ratio that you can improve on so if you can pay off or get rid of some of your monthly debt obligations like a car loan your dti will improve so clearly if you can reduce some of your debt then your debt to income will be more beneficial increasing your income by picking up a second job will also improve your dti so the second thing another thing you can do of course is increase your income line item which will also increase uh, the ratio of the debt to income that that you know it's it's hard to to know exactly what that's going to look like because again the 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 loan officer might be looking how far back your income is so they're probably going to look a couple years back on the tax return or something like that so if you picked up a new job and you're like yeah i'm working you know 80 hours well how long has that been it's been like a week you know they they might not be they might not be completely comfortable that that's going to be a long term 30 year lasting uh, capacity for you to be able to do that but again it kind of depends on the lending environment what the current regulations are in terms of how they how they're going to perceive that but clearly income going up would impact the DTI and could offset or compensate for other uh, less uh, less favorable items to the lender so the easiest way to improve your DTI is by shopping for homes at the lower end of your budget so if you determine so clearly the debt to income is trying to say how much home you can purchase so so the other thing that people usually are trying to do is they're, they're in, they end up trying to buy a house that's on the high end of what they might be able to be able to purchase so if your dti would be more favorable is if of course you you were shooting for less home than the maximum amount you would be able to get if you were to maximize all other factors such as your credit score and your down payment so if you determine that you can afford a house uh, up to three hundred thousand dollars but your credit score is lower than you would like you can increase your odds by being approved for a mortgage if you choose a house that costs two hundred and fifty thousand so you might say hey look i can buy a home up to three hundred thousand based on you know like my my income information or whatnot but i have some other problems with my credit score or something like that so in order to maximize your dti you could shoot for the home that's at the at the at the 250 and that and then of course then your dti would go up and possibly compensate with relation to the home value and that would uh, and, and the loan and so on that would uh, increase loan options uh, for unique populations if you meet certain criteria you may qualify for a va loan or a usda loan both of these loan types allow you to put a zero percent down without paying private mortgage insurance and do not require a minimum credit score which makes them a much cheaper option than the fha loans va loans you typically have to be a veteran who served for certain time periods or under specific circumstances or be a surviving spouse of a veteran with specific circumstances va loans are issued by private lenders uh, but backed by the va you must have a, a certificate of eligibility from the va to get a va loan usda loans these loans are typically in areas designed as uh, rural by the usda and borrowers must meet income eligibility limits based on the median income of their country and their household size